De stad. 100 jaar geleden woonde daar 10% van de wereldbevolking. Nu is dat de helft. En in 2050 zal drie kwart van de mensheid stedeling zijn. De groei van steden is onvermijdelijk en noodzakelijk voor ons economisch overleven. De stad is hard op weg een supermetropool te worden. Maar hoe houden we die megastad leefbaar? En hoe geven we vorm aan de groei? De VPRO gaat op zoek naar idealen, visioenen en gevaren. Het WK Voetbal 2010 wordt onder andere in het criminele centrum van Johannesburg gehouden. Gaat het de stad lukken om voor die tijd de binnenstad, toevluchtsoord van duizenden illegale immigranten, veilig en leefbaar te maken? Kijkt u naar Stayin' Alive in Joburg. I think the 2010 World Cup has had a profound effect, of course, on uh, the development of the inner city. All of these heavy infrastructure-related projects, you know, have got a huge boost. And then we've also still have got thousands of people pouring into the city on a daily basis, you know, in search of, you know, simple livelihood. That's also a legacy of the 2010 World Cup, you know. People are here in search of, you know, a better life, whether it be from rural Africa, continental Africa, Joburg is, you know, an economic powerhouse. It contributes more than 10% of the, of the continent's GDP. So the legacy has not only been an influx of investment, it's been an influx of people, all in search of that dream. Yeah. Ah my name is Ismail Farouk. I'm a social geographer, an artist, and a teacher. I grew up here in the streets of Johannesburg, and I work in Johannesburg. My work is about informal economics and the privatization of, the, of public space. My name is Zach Sejapala. I'm from the streets of Johannesburg. I grew up in the city called Bertrams, the poor of the poorest suburbs in the inner city. Behind me and beyond the Ponty City Tower, we have Hillbrow, which is the densest residential neighborhood in Johannesburg. And further east of Hillbrow, we have the downtown area, which has a fair number of sky skyscrapers. And even further east, we've got the sporting infrastructure, which has been used for the 2010 World Cup. And right here and below us, we've got Bertrams. Bertrams is poor neighborhood, one of the poorer neighborhoods in Johannesburg. It's also one of the older suburbs in Johannesburg. Do you want some, do you want some dungeon? <laughs> Thank you. 
So, Dolphin, you're a resident here in Bertrams? Yeah, I've staying in Bertrams for more than seven years now. Since I came from Congo, I applied for asylum seekers and I came here to stay. But the problem we have here, it's in connection with the buildings. Apparently, we heard that the JDA, Johannesburg Development Agency, they need to destroy some buildings because of the 2010 World Cup. They want parking. And all the Bertrams now, they are panicking because they know that from the 1st of February, the government will come to take all of them out and destroy the place. And now I start asking myself, this is the law of South Africa or what? What is this? Um, it seems to be an official letter of demolition. It says, we wish to inform you that starting February 1st, 2008, the Johannesburg Development Agency will begin demolishing the houses you are currently occupying. And so everybody's living in fear right now, fear for fiction. Huh? Yeah, you can ask them, they'll tell you. You can see from their faces. The problem is they don't, they don't have someone to talk for them. Sure. That's the problem. So if this happens today, where are you guys going to go? On the street. Yeah? Yeah. Most of the white people are too scared to come here and they lost total control of their properties and everybody just lives in there and move in there and nobody pays water or lights and uh, that's where they get taken over by slumlords because the real owner is, are not interested in their properties anymore. I buy these properties and I go in there in those properties and I speak to the people and I try to work with the people together and make them aware that I must start paying rent and I must start paying water and lights and if they do that I will upgrade the property so they live in better conditions because a lot of these houses like these houses at the moment still don't have electricity because of the city council from Johannesburg being very disorganized and reluctant and but I do believe the property the property prices are on the increase and obviously with the World Cup soccer coming will be a big difference. Okay. How, many, how many properties do you own in Bertrams? Uh, in Bertrams it's 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 properties in, in Bertrams in this suburb itself. <laughs> Where are you going? Oh, man. Keep the ball rolling. Now I'm still fixing my bed here. Your bed? Yes. So you're living here in this house? No, opposite. opposite. Four, five. How long you been there, Hattie? Ten years. And, and when, when you first came here, to, what, were the, what were the people like? Uh, uh, but by the time it was not like this, whereas it is today. It was still modernized at that time, still in good condition, but now that we look at slums. Mm -hmm. And what kinds of people lived here 20 years ago? Yeah, more or less uh, the whites who are just living here. Mm -hmm. around. And were people, would you say, sort of rich? Was it a sort more of middle, middle, mid middle? Middle class, a middle class. White middle class suburb? Yes. Okay. And when, when did you start experiencing the changes? The changes it comes when the 94 election and those things, people, they try to run away them. They're selling their 
estates and buildings and whatever and leaving their buildings and then contracts because they think people there's going to be a fight. Uh -huh. yeah. So all the white people ran away? The more or less those who were rich. Uh -huh. I noticed that uh, lots of people sitting outside washers, you know, builders, people sitting with equipment waiting for work. Yeah? Yes. Is that how you get your work? Do you have to sit outside yeah, as well? But the problem is this now that there's too much immigrants from Zimbabwe. No, it's, it's very overcrowded now. So well done. There's no, what can, if you, you want to say that you are paid such a money, that one doesn't have that qualification, you can say, accept anything, any offer. So people are working for next to nothing? For, for next to nothing, for, so for a living. Mm -hmm. For a living, for bread and butter. Apartheid around 94 was really tense time. There was lots of fear, especially around the, the white constituents who, who fled. There was an exodus out of the inner city. White people moved to the north and, and moved into these suburban enclaves, you know, with high walls and security, cutting themselves off from, from the inner city. influx of people into the city. People came from rural South Africa, people came from continental Africa, and this transformed the, the modernist landscape with new informal practices. The city planners inherited uh, a lot of the old apartheid legacies. There were problems related to aging infrastructure, to a shortage of services mainly, and, and infrastructure for marginal communities. The disinvestment actually resulted in bad buildings in the city and that's because the property owners were not putting money back into their buildings. And as a result, a lot of people moved into the buildings and squatted in the buildings and no money was being pumped in the city. I'm standing here on Highlands Hill and behind me is Ponty City. Ponty City being this great grey tower, an icon in the, in the Johannesburg cityscape. And Ponty City was built in the 1970s and was seen as the epitome of luxury living. And so we had middle and upper class, you know, mainly white people, predominantly white people living in the building with these penthouses on top and it was very luxurious. And of course it didn't last because of the natural cause. What happens in, in most cities is this decentralization. And here in Johannesburg specifically, you know, most of the white people left. So it perceived with negativity in the 80s where just perceived as like being like a place associated with drug dealing and and now lately because of the 2010 World Cup there was this proposal to redevelop it and the guys who came aboard these developers what they did was they made a deal with the owners of the building to say we'll redevelop this building and once we sold all the units we'll pay you for the overall structure but what they did was uh, actually not cool it was actually a scam because uh, they collected people's money and now they know where to be found. 
and in the meanwhile, this place has been gutted. So, you know, there, in some floors there are no windows, there are no walls, there's no infrastructure, there's like one working lift, and people have to live in that. And that's just a horrible tragedy. So it, it's squatted again? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's squatted again. Stay down, stay down, don't fucking be brave. Stay down, Zach. So oh, boring. I'm gonna ask somebody what happened. Oi, oi, my foot. Join my foot. I'm seeing the love well. I know it's the one. Some boy, some boy. Join, Baba. I'm telling you, I'm seeing the love well. I know it's the one. Ah, just this is this part. Must go now. Put it on. I don't want to be the man that be Baba Lega somewhere. Alright. So the back kitchen is up. Oh. Oh, there was just a gunfire. They had a gunfire, so we won't let you see it. Thanks. Um, and that shooting was related to some sort of taxi violence, you know, and taxi violence is, is, is quite apparent and it's related to control of the industry, you know. It's unregulated, it's disputed, informal, you know. There's a clash between these formal worlds and informal worlds because what the government would like to do is to formalize the taxi industry. And so there's, there's a struggle for control, control of routes, control of space, control of the streets. Seven, eight, nine, ten years. Zingo, <laughs> They've been here since 95. Huh? 95. 95. <laughs> Yo, 
This guy is still sleeping. They've stolen his shoes. They've stolen his shoes. This area was developed by Ethiopians before quite all these buildings are empty, no habitants, and now you see all the buildings where we move together are Ethiopians, and they are quite developing this area and contributing for the economic situation of the city of Johannesburg. We have a big problem for to survive here in South Africa. We are staying as asylum seeker every month renewal paper. Me, myself, I'm staying here six years, seven years. I don't have a permanent residential address. They don't want to give us the government. If I don't have that one, I, I can't open the account. How I, I, I'm thinking to buy a building or something. Sure. It's amazing for me. Yeah, sure. So if they clear the government, these things. But we, we're doing the nice things. We clear sure. this thing, we contribute our efforts and Sure. So we, we yeah. expect it from government something. Sure. because you don't have a foothold, you don't have ownership of the building, yes. what's going to happen when new developers, outside developers come back, come back in here because of the new value you've added? I believe when these proper, new property owners will come in, we will be chased out outside. Yeah. We will become a victim sure. as we don't have any legal ground yeah. and there is no, we don't have any ownership of this building. We become a victim. Sure. Yes, we will be thrown mm -hmm. outside all the buildings. This building behind us used to be the Southern Sun Hotel. And currently it is, it is derelict, it's been empty for a couple of years and its future is really uncertain and unknown. I don't know what's been planned for it, but it's, it's really crazy that such a big and like relatively beautiful, I mean it's not my star, but, but a big blue reflective building in, this, in the city remains uh, derelict and empty, unoccupied. What's the problem? What's up? What's the problem? It's just three that, that's right. Eh? Many people who are not up, get outside. So there's a crowd there, is yeah, there a problem? Go to the clinic, crowd. Yeah? Yeah, yes. It's but it's a public performance, eh? Yeah, man, it's a street. Yeah, but it's public space, yeah? Yeah, go to the ground. Yeah, where's the ground? Don't know. You don't know? FNB. Eh? FNB is in Soweto, man. 
We are standing outside the Central Methodist Church on Pratchett Street here in downtown Joburg. This is an important site because many, many thousands of Zimbabwean refugees are housed here. I think up to 2,000 sleep here at night. Over a year ago, the country erupted in xenophobic uh, attacks where people of other African origin, people from Zimbabwe, Mozambique, generally any other African diaspora were attacked by South Africans because, well, I think ultimately it was an attack because of the competition for resources. And uh, it started in the townships where many uh, foreign Africans were given access to housing, where many South Africans were waiting on the list for housing for years and years and years. And also there's this perception that foreign people are making more money than local South Africans. And so it really has been an attack because of on economic lines. So we're currently breaking the law because, you know, people are not allowed to walk on the grass at this point. And these are all means of regaining control of the park. As you can see that football is not allowed, you know. So park is not a place for sporting recreation. Here at the eastern gate of Chubert Park, and one thing that you can notice is there are lots of taxis parked here. And all of these taxis go to a, to a shopping mall in the east called Eastgate. But over and above that, a number of, of, of men standing around all drinking very cheap home-brewed beer. Over to my right on the sidewalk, you can see some women selling cheap beer. Over on this wall you can have a look at a number of park photographers and then park photographers are very important to the functioning of the park because it, it's the photographers who are policing the space, providing natural surveillance. <laughs> Hi, 
<laughs> Crime levels were extremely high and, and, and nobody visited the park, um, mainly because, you know, of, of fear of being mugged. But uh, in recent years, these negative perceptions have changed and that's mainly because of the intervention of the park photographers who provide natural surveillance and they've been looking out and policing the park. They've been taking care of the kids in the park. Yet there's this conflict with, with the social development priorities and these are priorities around homelessness and substance abuse. If, if you look behind us, you see that even though they, they claim to be away from the children, you find that most of the substance abuse is around the jungle gyms, it's around the kids' activities. And I mean, these two activities just don't mix and gel. So whilst the work of the photographers is, uh, is phenomenal, as far as the positive functioning of the park, you know, how you know, the, the, the problems are beyond the scale or the capacity of the photographers. You know, this is hell, guys. We never knew, I never knew when I started to smoke this. I thought this is fun, but it's not having fun. This is, 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 this is a destroyer. Now I like to say cocaine. I, 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 I'm, I'm like, my name is Cocaine, call me Coke for short. I enter this country without a passport. Ever since then, I made such Nigerians rich. Remember my friend, my name is Big C. I take a beauty queen and make her forget her looks. I take a school boy and make him forget his books. Remember my friend, my name is Big C. I'll make stabbing, robbing a common affair. Because listen, I'm expensive, valuable than gold. I need cash. You, you in me, you in trouble. Wise men hate me because they know I'm dangerous. Nigerians, they don't eat me, but they sell me. Remember my friend, my name is Big C. So that you know me, you've got to make a choice. Stop it, cause it's not worth it at all. It destroy you completely, take you from home to streets. That's not you, that's cocaine. It's rule you, it's change you inner and outer. Please, guys, let's pray. God will make us. We are winners because we've experienced it. It's better we stop now. Amen. Thank you, guys. We're standing here with Mpeti Morojeli, who is one of the architects responsible for some of the developments around the city, in particular the Greater Ellis Park development, which is the development responsible for the World Cup in 2010. I wonder, Mpeti, if you can tell us a bit more about the Greater Ellis Park development. Obviously the big focus is the stadium, 
the Ellis Park Stadium is one of the stadiums earmarked for probably up to a quarter-final match. Which um, is that one, huh? Yeah, yeah. That big red one. This area is unique in that it's, it's the only stadium, I think, which is within an existing dense urban community. You know, all the other uh, stadiums are in quite open areas. Um, um, it's also a part of the city which there are areas of, of decay. We have Bertrams and the problems associated with it. And so it makes for a very um, interesting test case of what the legacy of 2010 is going to be for this part of the city. For the Confederation Cup and the World Cup, the planning is driven by FIFA requirements, requirements for access, for security, um, requirements for hospitality areas, you know, all of those things. Um, this is a drawing which we have to continuously update uh, and submit to FIFA for, for their comments, approvals, etc., uh, which goes through all their particular requirements. The exclusion zone deals mostly with marketing and advertising and, and in terms of the, the FIFA's sponsors and uh, it's more like an ex a san sanitized zone. The three zones internally now are more about crowd control and access control. The main stadium which will be used is that one there. In front of it is the whole sponsor area's commercial display where you know the FIFA partners will have their displays before matches. Um, and then this central square here again has uh, part of our brief was to make sure that we comply with what FIFA requires in terms of access to the stadium, safety, security, emergency vehicles, um, levels of lighting, etc. All right, good morning, everyone. Attention. No, this is not good. You want to hear this. At ease again. Attention. Better. At ease again. Today, they've got people from the province, from the province here. They've got the army. They've got, you know, Joburg is full, basically, of police. They've got over 300 additional manpower. So our manpower is, is an excess to that. Crime is crime. We do not want to displace the crime. We do not want to displace the crime from sector two to go to the other sectors. We want to try and eradicate the crime throughout Johannesburg. You guys are the ones making the difference. You guys are the ones stopping the crime. So it's important that we start showing what we can do in Johannesburg to other parts of the country. Really, we're making history, guys. Please remember, we're, we, you, are being, you are part of history now. In two, three, four, five years, you'll be telling your kids, yes, I was one of those community patrollers at the beginning. All right, does anybody in particular want to go to Park Station? Show me hands. Who, who wants to go to Park Station? Go, 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 go. When you finish, get the, give the batons back. Okay, we started out with 100 batons. Look how few batons we have left now. I don't know if we're eating the batons or what. Okay, guys, Bucky, let's go. Um, this 
area used to be quite run down. It was used by taxis to just to hold, store their taxis and wash them. Uh, not really ranking as such. And uh, a lot of the buildings were empty and they were quite desolate. For the Confederation Cup and the World Cup, this transport square is used as one of the main sort of drop-off areas for some of the, the, the spectators. They will go through that yellow arch, you go straight through into the stadium. Um, so it's been developed both in terms of the, the events and legacy for the future. It's been a year since we've been here. It seems unchanged, huh? No change has been made. And the people who lived here? They, they're all gone. See, it's bricked up as well? Bricked up, yeah. So he's kicked out? He's kicked out. Yeah? We hear the pepper pot houses again, huh? Yeah. And they seem to be being renovated pretty well, huh? Actually, the owner is willing to take care of them. And With the Dutch guy? The Dutch guy. Yeah, yeah. And he's taking care of them in a manner of the people who lived in them. He's also accommodating them. He's not taking over and chucking people out. He's cool. trying That's... to find solutions on how can the people living here be involved in the whole upgrade of, of these houses. And he's actually employing some of the people living here to rebuild these houses. Yeah, hey, man, that's a promising story. Is that... Yeah, that's a good one. Cool. Like, like, like this guy. Telling me about this. Yeah. Zulbans. John Pondi. Sharp. He, he, I mean, he, he lives lives, here. He lives here. He yeah. works here. Hey, Yes, yes. Yeah. Then the lender will lend the government. Lender, we should look down. I should try to start at the bank. So start at the bank is a call. Put the money, put the money. Is a very large savings and money. So manje, what are we now? My plans are. My bank is shallow Like, just about savings, balana. My plans are. I plan to ask the government. 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 To 2000, so I don't cool in Malaysia and for a business that I qualify. Hey, Mara, who's the world cup plan? I'm going to be a long job because this is a lot to do now. And this is one of my changes, some money, and I'm sure now it's what I feel you will cup. Yeah, I'm born in world cup, but you will cup is a lap on a lap. I mean, I'm inciting you, I insist. I insist that. I think the plan to build new housing will be materialized, will be reached. That was the idea yeah. for the new housing, but looking at the days that are left. Hey, Mr. Dolphin. Hey. How are you, brother? Cool, man. It's been it's been a while, eh? The government didn't change its behavior to abuse occupiers. They just see the the money they're gonna make over 2010 around this place, but. They don't know that they are killing their own people. Now, we, in our understanding, it's not only refugees who are discriminated. Because those people there, you see, they are not refugees. They are South Africans, but they are crying day and night. And what is going on now? Is it a democracy or is it just a dictatorship like in our country of origin? Oh my 
people, I mean, they're volunteers, and we're here working to fight crime just as anybody else. And, you know, it's not fair for them to be treated like this. Thank you. So, so crime in Joburg must just spread because of the Confederation Cup inspector. Please, everybody, everybody here, everybody here has been waiting to go and fight crime. The same as you. But it's only one can answer that question. It's only you who can answer that question. Really, but I know, I, I understand how upset you are. I, I would appreciate a phone call saying, please, we start at 11 o'clock. We start at 12. Let's leave the morning operation. Let's do an afternoon operation. Fantastic. No problem. I'm happy. No, because we we cannot take advantage of these people just because they're volunteers, Inspector. I'm sorry. So we're, 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 they might not talk, but I'm going to talk on their behalf. Okay. Only seven members are coming. Okay. Sir. And how long will that be? Maybe let's wait the fifteen minutes. Please, please come. Okay, guys. Fifteen minute break. Except extra. Sorry. My 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 apologies this morning. I'm sorry. Hi, how are you, sir? Community police, we're doing standard stop and search. You step out of the car. Please. No, 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 sorry. Give me identification, I show you. Baba. How? Hi, how are you? How is things going to work if they don't have identification? Are you okay? Yes. Mama, If I was sneaking things, I'll pull my Bab, so Puma I will go special. If you are special, we give you special treatment. Ah, move next door. Go. Ah, go. Stop and search, my brother. Move. No, you're not a criminal. But it's on a job. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Don't you feel my bag? Sorry.
down. This indeed is a great day for Africa, for South Africa.
So you're living here in this house? No, opposite. Four five. How long you been there? Ten years. And and when when you first came here, what were the what were the people like? Uh, uh, but by the time it was not like this, uh, whereas it is today, that it was still modernized at that time, still in good condition. But now that we look at the slums. Mm -hmm. And what kinds of people lived here 20 years ago? Yeah, more or less uh, the whites who well, were living here. Mm -hmm. And were people, would you say, sort of rich? Was it a sort more of middle, 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 middle class? A middle class. White middle class suburb. Yes. Okay. And when when did you start experiencing the changes? The changes it comes when the '94 election and those things. People they try to run away them. They're selling their estates and buildings and whatever and leaving their buildings sure. and then contracts because they think people there's going to be a fight. Uh -huh. Yes. So all the white people ran away? They more or less those who were rich. Uh -huh. I noticed that uh, lots of people sitting outside washers, you know, builders, people sitting with equipment waiting for work. Yeah? Yes. Is that how you get your work? Do you have to sit outside yeah, as well? But the problem is this now that there's too much immigrants from Zimbabwe. No, it's, it's very overcrowded now. So well done. There's no, what can, if you, you want to say that you are paid such a money, that one doesn't have that qualification, you can say, accept anything, any offer. So people are working for next to nothing? For, for next to nothing, for, so for a living, mm -hmm. for a living, for bread and butter. Obviously the big focus is the stadium, uh, the Ellis Park Stadium is one of the stadiums earmarked for probably up to a quarter-final match. Which um, is that one, huh? Yeah, yeah. That big red one. This area is unique in that it's, it's the only stadium, I think, which is within an existing dense urban community. You know, all the other uh, stadiums are in quite open areas. Um, it's also a part of the city which there are areas of, of decay. We have Bertrams and the problems associated with it. And so it makes for a very um, interesting test case of what the legacy of 2010 is going to be for this part of the city. For the Confederation Cup and the World Cup, the planning is driven by FIFA requirements requirements for access, for security, um, requirements for hospitality areas, you know, all of those things. Um, this is a drawing which we have to continuously update uh, and submit to FIFA for, for their comments, approvals, etc., uh, which goes through all their particular requirements. The exclusion zone deals mostly with marketing and advertising and, and in terms of the the FIFA's sponsors, and uh, it's more like an ex a san sanitized zone. The three zones internally now are more about crowd control and access control.
main stadium which will be used is that one there. In front of it is the whole sponsor area's commercial display where you know the FIFA partners will have their displays before matches. Um, and then this central square here again has uh, part of our brief was to make sure that we comply with what FIFA requires in terms of access to the stadium, safety, security, emergency vehicles, um, levels of lighting, etc. This building behind us used to be the Southern Sun Hotel and currently it is, it is derelict. It's been empty for a couple of years and its future is really uncertain and unknown. I don't know what's been planned for it, but it's it's really crazy that such a big and like relatively beautiful, I mean, it's not my style, but but a big blue reflective building in, this, in the city remains uh, derelict and empty, unoccupied. What's the problem? What's up? What's the problem? It's just that, that's right. Hey? Many people who are not up, get outside. So there's a crowd there, is yeah, it a problem? Go to the play like ground. Yeah? Yeah, yes. yes. But it's a public performance, eh? Yeah, man, it's a street. Yeah, but it's public space, yeah? Yeah, go to the ground. Yeah, where's the ground? Don't know. You don't know? Hey? FNB is in Soweto, man. We are standing outside the Central Methodist Church on Pretchett Street. Central government sure. Because you don't have a foothold, you don't have ownership of the building, yes. what's going to happen when new developers, outside developers come back, come back in here because of the new value you've added? I believe when this proper, new property owners will come in, we will be chased out outside. Yeah. We will become a victim. Sure. As we don't have any legal ground yeah. and there is no, we don't have any ownership of this building, we become a victim. Sure. Yes, we will be thrown mm -hmm. outside all the buildings. This building behind us used to be the Southern Sun Hotel. 
and currently it is it is derelict it's been empty for a couple of years and its future is really uncertain and unknown i don't know what's been planned for it but it's it's really crazy that such a big and like relatively beautiful i mean it's not my style but but a big blue reflective building in this in the city remains uh, derelict and empty unoccupied What's the problem? What's up? What's the problem? It's just that, that's right. Eh? Many people who are not up, they get outside. So there's a crowd there, is yeah, it a problem? Go to the clinic, crowd. Yeah? Yeah, yes. But it's a public performance, eh? Yeah, man, it's a street. Yeah, but it's public space, yeah? Yeah, go to the ground. Yeah, where's the ground? Don't know. You don't know? FNB. Eh? is in Soweto, man. You've added. I believe when this new property owners will come in. We will be chased out outside. Yeah. We will become a victim. Sure. As we don't have any legal ground yeah. and there is no, we don't have any ownership of this building, we become a victim. Sure. Yes, we will be thrown mm -hmm. outside all the buildings. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this building behind us used to be the Southern Sun Hotel. And currently it is, it is derelict. It's been empty for a couple of years and its future is really uncertain and unknown. I don't know what's been planned for it, but it's, it's really crazy that such a big and like relatively beautiful, I mean, it's not my style, but, but a big blue reflective building in, this, in the city remains uh, derelict and empty, unoccupied. <laughs> What's up? What's the problem? It's just three that, that's right. Eh? Many people who are not up, they get outside. So there's a crowd there, is yeah, it a problem? Go to the clinic, crowd. Yeah? Yeah, yes. It's but it's a public performance, eh? Yeah, man, it's a street. Yeah, but it's public space, yeah? Yeah, go to the ground. Yeah, where's the ground? Don't know. You don't know? Eh? FNB is in Soweto, man. This area was developed by Ethiopians before quite all these buildings are empty 
no habitants. And now you see all the buildings where we move together are Ethiopians, and they are quite developing this area and contributing for the economic situation of the city of Johannesburg. We have a big problem for to survive here in South Africa. We are staying as asylum seeker every month renewal paper. Me, myself, I'm staying here six years or seven years. I don't have a permanent residential address. They don't want to give us the government. If I don't have that one, I, I can't open the account. How I, I, I'm thinking to buy a building or something. Sure. It's amazing for me. Yeah, sure. So if they clear the government these things. But we, we're doing a nice thing. We clear sure. this thing, we contribute our efforts and Sure. So we, we yeah. expect it from government something. Sure. Because you don't have a foothold, you don't have ownership of the building, yes. what's going to happen when new developers, outside developers come back, come back in here because of the new value you've added? I believe when these proper, new property owners will come in, we will be chased out outside. Yeah. We will become a victim sure. as we don't have any legal ground yeah. and there is no, we don't have any ownership of this building. We become a victim. Sure. Yes, we will be thrown mm -hmm. outside all the buildings. This building behind us used to be the Southern Sun Hotel. And currently it is, it is derelict. It's been empty for a couple of years and its future is really uncertain and unknown. I don't know what's been planned for it, but it's, it's really crazy that such a big and like relatively beautiful, I mean, it's not my style, but, but a big blue reflective building in, this, in the city remains uh, derelict and empty, unoccupied. Escape with new informal practices. The city planners inherited uh, a lot of the old apartheid legacies. There were problems related to aging infrastructure, to a shortage of services mainly, and an infrastructure for marginal communities. The disinvestment actually resulted in bad buildings in the city, and that's because the property owners were not putting money back into their buildings. And as a result, a lot of people moved into the buildings and squatted in the buildings, and no money was being pumped in the city. I'm standing here on Highlands Hill, and behind me is Ponty City. Ponty City being this great, great tower, an icon in the, in the Johannesburg cityscape. And Ponty City was built in the 1970s and was seen as the epitome of luxury living. And so we had middle and upper class, you know, mainly white people, predominantly white people living in the building with these penthouses on top and it was very luxurious. And of course it didn't last because of the natural cause. What happens in, in most cities is this decentralization. And here in Johannesburg specifically, you know, most of the white people left. So it perceived with negativity in the 80s where just perceived with like being like a place associated with drug dealing and and now lately because of the 2010 World Cup there was this proposal to redevelop it and the guys who came aboard these developers what they did was they made a deal with the owners of the building to say we'll redevelop this building and once we sold all the units we'll pay you for the overall structure but what they did was uh, actually not cool it was actually a scam because uh, they collected people's money and now they know where to be found. And in the meanwhile, this place has been gutted. So, you know, there are some floors, there are no windows, there are no walls, there's no infrastructure, there's like one working lift, and people have to live in that. And that's just a horrible tragedy. So it's, it's squatted again? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's squatted again.
Stay down, stay down. Your bed here. Your bed? Yes. So you're living here in this house? No, opposite. opposite. Four, five. How long you been there, Hattie? Ten years. And, and when, when you first came here, what were the, what were the people like? Uh, uh, but by the time it was not like this, uh, whereas it is today. It was still modernized at that time. Still in good condition, but now that we look at the slums. Mm -hmm. And what kinds of people lived here 20 years ago? Yeah, more or less uh, the whites who well, were living here. Mm -hmm. And were people, would you say, sort of rich? Was it a sort more of middle, 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 middle class? A middle class. White middle class suburb? Yes. Okay. And when, when did you start experiencing the changes? The changes, it comes when the 94 elections and those things, people, they try to run away them. They're selling their estates and buildings and whatever, and leaving their buildings sure. and then contracts because they think people, there's going to be a fight. Uh -huh. yes. So all the white people ran away? They, more or less those who were rich. Uh -huh. I noticed that uh, lots of people sitting outside washers, you know, builders, people sitting with equipment waiting for work. Eh? Yes. Is that how you get your work? Do you have to sit outside yeah, as well? But the problem is this now that there's too much immigrants from Zimbabwe. No, it's, it's very overcrowded now. So well done. There's no, what can, if you, you want to say that you are paid such a money, that one doesn't have that qualification, you can say, accept anything, any offer. So people are working for next to nothing? For, for next to nothing, for, so for a living. Mm -hmm. For a living, for bread and butter. Johannesburg cityscape and Ponte City was built in the 1970s and was seen as the epitome of luxury living and so we had middle and upper class you know mainly white people predominantly white people living in the building with these penthouses on top and it was very luxurious and of course it didn't last because of the natural cause what happens in in most cities is this decentralization and here in Johannesburg specifically you know most of the white people left so it perceived it negativity in the 80s where just perceived with like being like a place associated with drug dealing and and now lately because of the 2010 World Cup there was this proposal to redevelop it and the guys who came aboard these developers what they did was they made a deal with the owners of the building to say we'll redevelop this building and once we sold all the units we'll pay you for the overall structure but what they did was uh, actually not cool it was actually a scam because uh, they collected people's money and now they're nowhere to be found. And in the meanwhile, this place has been gutted. So, you know, there, some floors, there are no windows, there are no walls, there's no infrastructure, there's like one working lift, and people have to live in that. And that's just a horrible tragedy. So it's, it's squatted again? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's squatted again.
Stay down, stay down, don't fucking be brave. Stay down, Zach. Before quite all these buildings are empty, no habitants, and now you see all the buildings where we move together are Ethiopians, and they are quite developing this area and contributing for the economic situation of the city of Johannesburg. We have a big problem for to survive here in South Africa. We are staying as asylum seeker every month renewal paper. Me, myself, I'm staying here six years or seven years. I don't have a permanent residential address. They don't want to give us the government. If I don't have that one, I, I can't open the account. How I, I, I'm thinking to buy a building or something. Sure. It's amazing for me. Yeah, sure. So if they clear the government, these things. But we, we're doing the nice things. We clear sure. this thing, we contribute our efforts and Sure. So we, we yeah. expect it from government something. Sure. Because you don't have a foothold, you don't have ownership of the building. Yes. What's going to happen when new developers, outside developers come back, come back in here because of the new value you've added? I believe when these proper, new property owners will come in, we will be chased out outside. Yeah. We will become a victim sure. as we don't have any legal ground yeah. and there is no, we don't have any ownership of this building. We become a victim. Sure. Yes, we will be thrown mm -hmm. outside all the buildings. A lot of the buildings were empty and they were quite desolate. For the Confederation Cup and the World Cup, this transport square is used as one of the main sort of drop-off areas for some of the, the, the spectators. They will go through that yellow arch, you go straight through into the stadium. Um, so it's been developed both in terms of the, the events and legacy for the future. since we've been here. It seems unchanged, huh? No change has been made. And the people who lived here? They, they're all gone. You see, it's bricked up as well? Bricked up, yeah. So he's kicked out? He's kicked out. Yeah? We're here at the pepper pot houses again, huh? Yeah. And they seem to be being renovated pretty well, huh? 
actually the owner is willing to take care of them. And With the Dutch guy? The Dutch guy. Yeah, yeah. And he's taking care of them in a manner of the people who lived in them. He's also accommodating them. He's not taking over and chucking people out. He's cool. trying That's to find solutions on how can the people living here be involved in the whole upgrade. Of, of these houses and he's actually employing some of the people living here to rebuild these houses. Hey man, that's a promising story. Is that? Yeah, that's a good one. Cool. Like, like, like this guy. Telling me about this. Yeah. Zulbans. John Pondi. Sharp. He, he, I mean, he, he lives lived, here? He lives here, he yeah. works here. So man, you wanna be in my plans? I'm not going to touch that now. Like, just about seven years old now. My plans are new. I plan to touch that again now. Touch that again next year. But since that was the hamster, I've found a sister. Plus, since that was the other foot, a sister. And it's a beast. I want them to something. In the 80s, where just perceived as like being like a place associated with drug dealing and and now lately because of the 2010 World Cup there was this proposal to redevelop it and the guys who came aboard these developers what they did was they made a deal with the owners of the building to say we'll redevelop this building and once we sold all the units we'll pay you for the overall structure but what they did was uh, actually not cool it was actually a scam because uh, they collected people's money and now they know where to be found. And in the meanwhile, this place has been gutted. So, you know, there some floors, there are no windows, there are no walls, there's no infrastructure, there's like one working lift, and people have to live in that. And that's just a horrible tragedy. So it's, it's squatted again? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's squatted again. Stay down, stay down, don't fucking be brave. Stay down, Zach. Thanks. Um, 